Now, um, I really want to talk about the pro-Biden propaganda that Justin King, Bo, the fifth column, has been doing. Um, there's a lot of it. This is only going to be one of a number of videos, I suspect. Uh, this is, I'm going to start, try and start with going back a little bit. Um, so I think, so there's a huge issue for me with what he says, which is that uh, basically Biden's like the calm guy in the room, really trying to calm things down, sort things out. And anyone who's really watching knows that's rubbish. Anyway, so um, this is the beginning. Okay. So we have talked about it. Generally speaking, when something like this occurs, the West, they're like, calm down, de-escalate right now. Let, let's bring the volume down. And it, it's, it's right away. Uh, no, I just find it really funny how he does keep saying that. He said this in another video. Um, because basically the West is the people that stirs this stuff up, not calming stuff down. No one's invading everywhere. Oof. Um, this time, it started that way, but then it, it disappeared. I mean, literally in this case, the tweets got deleted. Um, the West was calling for restraint, and then there was a change in tone. Literally, literally the tweets were deleted, and it turned into, we're going to back Israel no matter what they do. Whatever they feel they need to do, we're going to fully support that. That was the tone from the West. It is shifting again. It is shifting again. And you're seeing those calls for... Now, I did talk in the other video about how... Um... Yeah, he was basically saying the only reason it changed, the only reason they were basically supporting Israel and doing whatever they wanted was because of the capture of hostages and the hostages included US citizens, which is ridiculous because that means that US citizens are also being bombed along with the Israeli ones. Restraint and de-escalation. Biden, uh, when asked about it, when asked about the potential ground offensive that everybody's been waiting for that was apparently delayed because of the weather. He acknowledged that, you know, they're going to go after those people who are responsible for it, meaning the leadership. But he also said, staying, big mistake, big mistake. And there was a general tone of we need to bring the volume down. Things are getting out of hand, could escalate, could widen. That was the, the general tone. And there have been conversations with diplomats from multiple countries that kind of echoed this. One of the... So I just find it really amazing that he's saying, oh, this is all very uh, contained because they're not doing a ground invasion. Biden's calming things down. And it's just like... Gaza has been bombed horrifically and he really avoids talking about that by the way he talks about the ground invasion that he keeps saying isn't going to happen and that's good but he very rarely talked about the bombing that's actually happening the more interesting statements that has come out of all of this is one that came from an Israeli spokesperson who said that they developed multiple offensive plans now to to people who may not really be well versed in this, that's actually really, really good news. Um, the tone that was set early on by the Israeli government was, we're going to do a ground offensive, we're going to go in door to door, we're going to find everybody. And they had locked themselves into a plan. And it wasn't really a good one. The idea that now there are multiple offensive plans means that it's no longer emotion-based. They are thinking now. The, the like, yeah, they are very much thinking about how to bomb people in Gaza more. I mean, we're now, I mean, this is four weeks ago, but we're now at a stage where they're particularly targeting hospitals. So uh, that, that's their thinking. That's the product of their thinking. They're, they're evaluating the situation. 
that is really good news. Um, that's something that would more than likely lead to a much less, uh, let's say, intrusive response. Um, so with those two things in combination, and I would like it noted, I don't actually think those two things are related. Um, it certainly appears that Israel took the break in the weather and did what, I mean, they actually pioneered it, did the Tenth Man thing and had somebody question everything. And they started developing other plans. Um, and at the same time, you started getting the shift in tone. So I, I know I know saying they came up with multiple ways to go in and do this. Not everybody is going to see that as a good thing, but trust me, it is. Um, them being locked in to just a full-on, a full-on operation, that that was bad. Um, okay, I think it's so worth having a look at some of the comments. We still don't know at time of filming exactly what is going to happen. Okay, so we know now. Bombing hospitals, targeting hospitals. We've got um, the IDF going into the basement of hospitals claiming that diaper nappies are like evidence of it being a had Hamas headquarters and stuff. Anyway, so we've got um, a lot of the comments in this. So this is one way you can tell he is doing pro-Biden propaganda and it's working. So we've got this one. There needs to be a path to the Palestinian state, President Biden. I said amen to that. This is the top comment. I'm just thankful that Trump isn't in the White House. Everything would be ton t 10 times worse with his impulsive, incompetent leadership. 10 times worse? Right. Even if you don't like President Biden, I respect that he is not trying to escalate the drama, unlike Trump saying stupid shit. Right. Of course. Yes. Biden's doing a great job of keeping this under control. Biden just out fundraised the whole of the Republican ticket combined. Now that's some good news to add to this. What? Thank you, Bo. The apathy uh, pointed at the Arab civilians has been frightening. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. He's um, not actually doing much for the. Uh, Arab civilians, I've got to be honest with you. But then there's a reply after decades of active and virulent hostility encouraging deadly activity. I'm not shocked that terrible things are being done, but I'm so grateful to Biden for speaking up. It's amazing. Let's hope that thinking and compassion for innocent people prevails. Yes, because that's um, what Biden's doing. Imagine Donald in this situation. He'd be pressuring Bibi to open a few Trump hotels in exchange for weapons deals. And it just kind of goes on and on. Um, there was a similar win to Biden for a few years back when he was asked if the USA would help if Taiwan if invaded. The White House decided to roll it back and Biden said, no, I meant what I said. So Biden does seem to be a POTUS willing to assert himself. Yeah, so anyway, that's kind of, um, you can show it tell that this is Biden pro Biden propaganda because the comments my god um so there's now let's do this one next want to so this is the Biden's trip that was kind of ruined by the hospital bombing let's just be clear I want to kind of acknowledge something that I, I think is important um this trip a trip to the Middle East at this point in time this is politically risky big if it goes bad he's going to take the blame politically it is very risky morally it's an imperative so we've now got him saying biden's taking this huge risk by doing this by going to be a diplomat in the middle east about gazans being bombed i'm sorry that's He's not risking shit. Biden is...
fine. He would have been fine. He's still fine. Okay? He's not being bombed in his home or in a hospital he goes to. It's disgusting the way he talks about this. Because if it goes well, it could save a whole lot of lives. I think it's important to acknowledge that this is not something he has to do, politically speaking. Um, and I no, what he actually has to do, right, is to stop funding Israel. He has to stop giving Israel money. That's what he has to do, okay? Doesn't have to do that trip. He doesn't have to do any trip to just stop giving Israel money. Absolutely appalling. Okay, so we'll talk about Israel first. Uh, I don't actually know the order of the trip. But he will be going to Israel. While he is there, there will be three major points that are being discussed. Three things that are supposed to get out and on the table. The first is the United States is behind Israel. Biden has to get that out there. Shouldn't be too hard. Him and Netanyahu have known each other forever. So that should be an easy part of this. And there you have it. It's like Biden totally with Israel, totally behind Israel. Him and Netanyahu's best buddies going way back. I mean, for God's sake. And he doesn't seem to think this is a problem because Netanyahu is famously very corrupt. And, um, I mean, you... Bajan Panada did a video where you can see going way back, Biden has um, been very clear that he supports Israel and if they didn't have an Israel, they'd have to invent it. And that's kind of what he's talking about there. I mean, that's kind of where he's going with it. To be, he may not be saying here that he'd have to invent Israel because he's not going to admit it, but this is why it's, it shows the entanglement going back years. While he's doing that and saying the United States is totally behind Israel, He's supposed to convince them to do everything they can to limit civilian loss. That's the second part. The third part is coming up to some kind of agreement that allows NGOs, humanitarian organizations, multinational teams maybe, into Gaza to help. Maybe during this, this conversation, they pitch them on the idea of handling this in a much more subtle way as far as as far as realigning the organization there um, I mean I just it just seems really bizarre to me that he is literally trying to say oh he's just doing a little bit of subtle behind the scenes stuff it's very clear that Biden doesn't care about the civilian loss it's very clear he's even literally said it okay on occasions I just look oof. so the next stops as if that's not enough will be to go to Jordan and Egypt my guess is those are both going to be the same conversation more or less stay out of it militarily can you help those will be the conversations. Um, and then after that, uh, he will be meeting with the president of the Palestinian Authority. Again, I'm saying that as if that's the chronological order. I don't know the order in which the meetings are taking place. But those will be the conversations. Uh, as far as the conversation with the Palestinian Authority, it's either going to be immediately after Israel or it's going to be absolutely last. I know foreign policy people right now, you're like, why are they talking to them? Yeah, I'm going to want to talk about that later because he kind of, um, yeah, the way he talks about talking to Palestinians is ridiculous. But, um, I mean, the thing is, you kind of get the point there. So he's, um, yeah, he's basically saying, oh, Biden's very very careful with this delicate situation he's, he's really thinking about it they've all really thought about it I I also find I kind of question how much how he knows so much 
Anyway, so we've got all these comments. I want a president, top comment, I want a president who does the moderately correct thing even when it isn't politically advantageous. This is where character matters. If he fails, I for one won't blame him because he at least tried. That's more than another would have done. Sending good vibes your way, Mr. President. He always gets the blame, no matter what happens. Biden is proving to be a global class act. We love him and pray for his safety. I was thinking this morning that this is where a previous president would likely have sent Jimmy Carter. US doesn't have any with those chops anymore. Biden actually comes the closest. Biden is basically a good person who cares and doesn't want unnecessary loss of life. Life. The GOP sees this as weakness. I see it as an amazing strength. Wow, our president is taking a political risk. It must be because he believes that he must. Our president just keeps impressing me more every day. Biden wasn't my first pick in 2020, but he's definitely my first pick in, first pick in 2024. We can all take solace in the fact that Biden won't head over there and just throw rolls of paper towels around. I mean, it just, I mean, it's just like that. So glad we have a president with morals and a conscience. Biden's experience will be paramount important here. Good luck, Mr. President. I love that Biden is expressing for concern for the state, safety, statehood and security of Palestinians. He's not bothering to stop the buying though, is he? I just, it's just ridiculous. What's he saying here? So, but that's the, that's the trip. If it goes well, people will probably forget about it. Um, if it goes poorly, it's going to hurt him politically. If it goes well, a whole bunch of lives will be saved, though. That's the myth. So yeah, he's just really going on about how oh this is terrible, for, this is very difficult for Biden, very difficult. I just I just find it so ridiculous and appalling. And what's actually gone badly for him subsequently is the fact that he's been supporting genocide. Justin King refuses to acknowledge this. Okay, Biden's popularity has gone absolutely plummeted because of his support for um, Israel and the genocide. So um, we'll talk a little bit, we'll go into this one a little bit. This is three weeks ago, so I've tried to do it in sort of order. Here we go. Can you explain what Biden's doing? He's holding Israel to a ceasefire, but then saying there won't be a ceasefire until they get the people who were taken back. Then he's moving the military in. Can you please explain this? Okay, first, there is no ceasefire. Um, Biden is trying, and again, Biden doesn't call the shots here. This is, this is Israel. Um, Biden is trying to get Israel to delay any potential ground offensive until the captives are returned. That's one thing that he's doing. A ground offensive Delaying a ground offensive is not the same thing as a ceasefire. There hasn't been a ground offensive this entire time. These are definitely not ceasefire conditions. So there, there's that part. So he's on one hand telling Israel, hey, we need to get those people back. Don't go in yet. Then talking to Palestinian forces, he's saying, hey, look, give me the people back. And then we can talk to them about a full-on ceasefire. That's what's going on there. They, they seem contradictory. They're not. It's two very different things. Ground offensive, that means tanks, artillery, APCs, boots on the ground inside Palestinian territory. That's what that is. That's bad. My personal opinion is that that should be avoided at pretty much all costs. Uh, now, I've got to wonder why he keeps going on about how the ground offensive would be really terrible when the bombing has clearly been killing so many people, and it already was at that point, and this video is from three weeks ago. Again, yeah, it says three weeks ago. Uh, let's see what the date is. October the 24th. So, um, it's been very clear that the bow um that it's not um been good for the gazans anyway uh personally i think the 
the uh, the reason he's worried about a ground invasion is because he knows the IDF are rubbish, basically. Is to me, it's a horrible idea. Um, the a ceasefire is a, a complete stopping of, of all fire. It ceases fire. Um, so. You have that going on. That is State Department, the Biden administration, pursuing diplomatic foreign policy. Then you have the military moving in, moving assets, stationing assets, turning, um, like putting advisors out, uh, putting air defense stuff up, all of this. That is in case the other stuff goes wrong. This is literally give peace a chance and I'll cover you in case it doesn't work out. So I just find this, uh, give peace a chance, it's still bombing. They were bombing at the time, okay? The Israelis were bombing Gaza at that time. There's no peace. And this whole thing is just like him being, this, this whole thing of him explaining what's happening is absolutely propaganda for Biden and for the state of the USA. This is still kind of saying that he, it's all just really trying really hard to calm things down, make things okay, make things better. Really not doing that though. That's what's going on. Um, using diplomacy first is how it's supposed to be done. We haven't seen that in a really long time. That's why it looks so weird. Um, so the risks associated with this, what he's doing now, not much. His main goal is to try to stop the conflict from widening. That's like from a foreign policy perspective, that's the most important thing for the Biden administration, for the US. That's, that's, that's what is front and center. Um, the diplomatic efforts are aimed at doing that. Because if they could, let's say, get the captives back, okay, they get those people back, they can turn to Israel and be like, look, there's no reason to go in. You okay, look, I haven't seen Biden or anyone trying to get those captives back. I haven't seen Biden or anyone in the US who's, like, got any power trying to stop the bombing, which would make it easier for the captives to be returned. I don't... It's just so ridiculous. I keep saying we have to keep bombing because they're not returning the captives. How can they expect captives to be returned while bombing is happening? It's ridiculous. Anyway, let's go up to here. I think. Of military installations all over the world. And are okay, to deter non-state actors from entering. Okay, so we're going to get into why he's worried about the conflict widening now. And to position in case it does get wider. Um, you know, the United States has a, just a massive maze of military installations all over the world. And when things go regional, they're lightning rods. Um, that they they tend to take hits. Yeah, those poor American bases of military that are there in other countries to basically control the world or do their, do their thing where they are controlling the Oh, it's just like, oh. I mean, those military bases, those are in those countries to be, to partly to control those countries. It's partly because yeah, that, that is actually what happens, okay? I mean, we have military, US military bases in the UK. It is part of their control over us. Don't make any mistake about it. And they get hit because they deserve it. Um, then you have the US diplomatic presence all over the world that is also a, a frequent lightning rod as well. Yeah, there's poor US diplomats getting it because the US keeps supporting genocide. Um, so the US has a lot of exposure 
even though, at least for the time being, you know, the U.S. isn't involved. That's his moves. That's, that's what's going on. And the U.S. is involved, okay? Because the U.S. is providing arms, it's providing loads of money, he is involved. And I just, like, it's just so disingenuous. And this is a guy who's supposed to be left-wing, all right? This is a guy who even likes to claim he's an anarchist, he has in the past. And yet, he's absolutely shilling here for the state of the USA and, by extension, the state of Israel. I'm going to go up a little bit, so there's a... And again, realistically, I, I know everybody in the world looks at the U.S. and well, they call the shots. <laughs> Not here. Not here. The, uh, the opinions that matter are in Tel Aviv and Tehran. So this is kind of a ridiculous thing that he says like uh, uh, he kind of likes to make it seem really hard for Biden to do anything now the reality is and he knows this because he likes to go on about the military the evils of the military industrial complex he knows this the reality is that Biden provides arms provides money they Israel would not exist and would not be able to do what it does if it wasn't getting all this support to do it from the US. He knows this. They do have leverage. They should just stop giving them all the weapons, all the bombs that they use to oppress the people of Palestine, the Palestinians. He knows this. It's, it's just such a big lie. It's terrible. Because that long-term strategic plan for the Middle East that most of the world has, where it's deprioritized and the U.S. kind of focuses elsewhere and moves out, if this sparks and widens, that's gone. That's gone. Um, and again, it, it's bad for everybody. So, there, there's a lot riding on the decisions that are being made right now. And I think it's way more than most people are, most people really understand. So, I personally would like to see more pressure about not engaging in a ground offensive. But maybe that pressure is behind the scenes. You know, the fact that some of it is coming out into the public when the U.S. and Israel have the relationship that they've had for so long, that's kind of an indication that there is a lot being said behind the scenes. But we, we don't know how much. Um, and short of somebody leaking it, we may never know. But that's... That's the rough sketch of what's going on. So it's just kind of ridiculous that he's trying to say that behind the scenes there's going to be a lot more like, calm down Israel, calm down, you don't need to do a ground offensive. He's just so obsessed with this idea that as long as there's no ground offensive it's not really much of a problem. I just, oh, it's so appalling, ridiculous. Anyway, so let's have a look at the comments then, shall we? Anyone who thinks Trump would have handled this situation well is clinically delusional. Well, no, he wouldn't have. But anyone who thinks Biden's handling it well is not thinking straight either. Every day the tanks don't roll is a small win. And look, Bo of the fifth column has uh, hearted that one. Sleepy Joe, listening in his basement too old, seems to me as though Biden is the best man for the job. This is what leadership looks like. To all the people in saying, imagine if Tree Rump was our president, please stop. We're trying to cling on to hope here, not visualise a nightmare. All right, because it's not a nightmare for Gazans to be bombed constantly for weeks. Glad it's Biden handling this instead of the guy who stared directly as a solar eclipse. Say what you like about Biden. He is a consummate professional when it comes to this stuff. 
When I heard Biden say, if I told you it wouldn't work, when asked clearly on what he's doing to free the hostages, I know he's handling this as best as possible. What can I say? I trust the man. He's earned it. I love how you talk about foreign policy as like a po game of poker where everyone is lying. It does help put things into perspective. I also like the US being the world's EMT, not the world's police. Thank you, Boeing, for the team, all, team for all you do. It's just so ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the people of Gaza are feeling great about a game of poker. Bo, thank you for pointing out saying the US cannot call a ceasefire. You are the first person I've seen say the US cannot call a ceasefire since we're not actually involved in the war. No, they can't call a ceasefire maybe, but they can stop giving them the weapons. Anyway, oh yeah, Joe is dealing delicately with an explosive situation. Now imagine Trump. It's unbelievable. Now I'm not saying Trump would have done well with this. And maybe he would have done worse, but I just find this whole thing just so ridiculous, the way that they're framing it as though he's uh, done a great job. Internet people, it's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about the Democratic Party challenging Biden, maybe. We're going to talk about a letter. We're going to talk about a request for assurances. We're going to talk about the way it's being covered. And then we're going to talk about the alternative to the way it is widely being covered. And maybe it is. Maybe it is. I mean, that's definitely one way to read it. But there's, there, there's also another way. So there's sort of, um, so the beginning of this has been saying that, oh, the Dems are challenging Biden, the, the Dems in the Senate and in the House of Representatives, they're, they're presenting a challenge to Biden. This is not how he, this is quite interesting because he tries to frame it differently. There's another way to look at it. Um, recently, we talked about how diplomacy works. And I think we were talking about how the Saudi defense minister was willing to have direct conversations and how that was a really good sign for de-escalation because they weren't using an envoy. They weren't using a middleman. To okay, I also want to add here that he's doing pro-Saudi propaganda here, kind of. Like, he's trying to... He's here talking about the Saudis in terms of being, like, reasonable. He spends, like, a minute talking about this. To, uh, to kind of slow down the process was the person who actually made the decisions. See, in, in diplomacy, the reason you use an envoy or somebody like that is because they can walk in and be like, I love y'all. I love you guys. I love your culture. I okay, I just want to stop here and say, uh, he's pronounced your envoy. I would say envoy. Uh, basically, a kind of diplomat, a middleman. Yeah. I believe in your cause, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to try to get my country's credit card and, you know, let y'all use it to buy Ray-Bans and berets or whatever you need. Um, and while I want to do that, the thing is, I, I got to talk to my boss first. So, maybe you can help me out here. Give me something to, to tell them. Because I'm on your side. But, but my boss, he's different. That's how you get leverage. That's how you get leverage, and that's how you can get concessions. The aid that is in question here. When we talked about the aid before, talked about how there's no leverage. When you're talking about the yearly aid that everybody talks about, there's, there's no real leverage there. And if you don't know, that's actually already like designated out through a memorandum of understanding, I want to say out until 2028. But the bulk aid, I separated the two, the bulk aid, there's a little bit of leverage there. You know how you might get it? If you were able to say, hey, I, I, I love you guys. I love everything about you. I believe in your cause, whatever it is. But the Senate? I don't know. I don't know that they're going to that they're going to let this go through. I, I, they want some assurances. They want some information. Maybe you can help. So this basically, right, so he did this kind of whole minute in a five minute video where he's talking about how the Saudis were doing direct communication and this was good. 
because they weren't using a middleman and you know the middleman is used to say oh, well you know I'd like to do this but the person that I'm representing doesn't so now he's like basically trying to say that Biden is the middleman for the Senate and the Senate are the people who he answers to and has to give reassurances to and this is how the and that basically the Senate are kind of rebelling because it's um, a way of um, giving Biden leverage as a middleman. It's unbelievable. I'll be out and that'll help me sway them. It's a great big poker game and everybody's cheating. This is how you get leverage. And that's And prob- he's referred to a poker game again, like he refers to it all as game. I find that quite disgusting. There are other ways that you can refer to what's happening here. You don't have to call it a poker game. Probably what's happening. That would be my guess. Um, I don't think it's actually a big challenge from within the Democratic Party to Biden. Uh, I think it's more about maybe some senators understanding, maybe they even talk to Biden, uh, and uh, helping to. So this is a thing, right? It's like the Senate either understands or maybe even talks to Biden. Like, he's not actually saying that they did. It's very much all about suggestion and maybe and could have. But he is basically telling you that this is what's happened because he's framed this whole video around it. I just find this absolutely appalling. Create a boss. Somebody that can be used to say, I gotta go talk to this other person and this is what they need. It seems more likely. Uh, my real question is not whether or not it's a challenge to buy. It's foreign policy. Foreign policy, it's about power. And it's always gonna be about power. So that's not my real question. My real question is whether or not you think they engaged in a little bit of like light editing or they just copied and pasted the uh, request for assurances and information straight out of the State Department's dissent channel. Because the language is super similar, it's weird. Anyway, so, it's... Oh, for God's sake. Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to uh, talk about some news that I feel like might have been over... This is so annoying. Honestly. Really hate it when they have that thing, you can accidentally click on it and find the other video. That's just really unhelpful. Okay, so um, he's he's talking about the Dissent Channel. Now, there was a thing put out on the Dissent Channel that was basically saying, oh, God, this stuff that Biden's doing is really terrible. Um, This is like people who are working for him, people who are working under him. And so he's basically trying to say that people who are criticising him are still on his side. It's just like... It's basically, he's like trying to frame everything as about, as like all working towards Biden's grand plan. That's what it is. It's really, ooh. Anyway, so um, here we've got, so nice to see the Democrats growing some courage for a change. So now this is like, um, pro, this is like biggie on the Democrats. I love that they're turning the situation on his head. Maybe we should also send inspectors to audit all military aid to make sure it's not diverted or misused. Oh, for God's sake, military aid, everything for the mil- oh, mil- everything that's military is going to be used for against the Palestinians. That's the whole point. Uh, so basically, international diplomacy is exactly like buying a car. Lol, thanks for all you do, Bo, you are the best. Cry emoji, yes. It's just like poker game, buying a car. These are thousands, millions of lives we're talking about here. 
and this is how they're framing it. It's appalling. So anyway, it's, if it's not like pro-Biden propaganda, it's pro-Democrat propaganda. This will send the evangelicals into hysteria, but there are no evangelicals vote them anyway, so their whining can be ignored. I appreciate that some politicians are questioning aid to Israel. If Israel wants aid, Netanyahu has to back off from his aggressive campaign against the Palestinians. Almost makes me question if that dissent channel wasn't actually leaked. And oh look, Bo, uh, Bo has uh, hearted that and then he said, it is very rare for one of those memos to become public. Reply, couldn't get action through proper channels, so force the hand from the outside. Dirty move and I like it. So that's kind of how it's how he's framing it. That's how he's making sure that people see it. OK, if it's not pro Biden, it's pro Democrat. It's all part of grand plan to try and really, really calm things down. And this is a yeah. So you see this is five days ago. So this is a relatively recent one. This is after it has been confirmed, I think, that like 10,000 people have been killed in the Gaza Strip. So I'm sorry, this is just appalling. Guy is just doing blatant propaganda. I hate it. He's horrible. And there'll be more.